We are back with another episode. I'm your host, Derek Asante, and we're back with another one. Now, if you've been tuning in, I appreciate your support. Continue to support. Hit the like, subscribe, anything that you need to do to help me grow this channel as we keep doing it. Now, folks on Podbeam, you already know what it is. I love you guys and continue to support. Like, share, and I hope you appreciate the content. Let me know in the comments, whatever app you're using. I know some of them don't have the comments, so find me on YouTube at Daps Show and leave me some comments in there. Leave me some of your thoughts, how we can improve, how we can keep you know this thing going, and what would you like for me to really you know um, dive into. Without further ado, let's go into this episode here. Now, I've been talking about Robert Greene's incredible book, The 48 Laws of Power. And I'm kind of summarizing every single law as we go through. I've covered up to law three so far, and today I'm bringing you law number four. Law number three, we discussed what it was talking about, which was concealing your intentions. And that was very powerful. I thought that was very moving, critical for a lot of us, including myself. Now, this episode, we're talking about law number four. And law number four states always say less than necessary look how simple that is say less than necessary don't say too much don't talk too much don't divulge all all, all the unnecessary details or excessive detail right so saying less is definitely more powerful it creates mystique, it creates intrigue, it creates curiosity, and it also, you know, allows you to have more influence, also known as power in some scenarios. This law states that when you are trying to impress people with words, the more you say, the more common you appear and the less in control you will be. Think about that. That means the more I say, the more I'm trying to convince you. And that's frustrating. Trying to convince someone who isn't able to be convinced, isn't willing to be flexible, isn't open to new ideas. Very challenging. So why put yourself in that situation? On the other side, why do I want to say all of that? It's either you are interested or you want to try something new or you don't. Right. And I leave it at that. But how can you use this principle in your daily life and in today's society? And that's what this episode is really about. I mean, that's what all the episodes are about. How can you apply some of this stuff that I'm talking about? Law number four is all about the power of restraint and knowing when to hold back. So in law number three, we were talking about concealing your intentions not letting your dreams and your ambitions or your your vision you know go out there don't put it out there too too early prematurely cuz most of the time it fails when you put it out there too early uh in front of the wrong people or before the wrong people but law number 4 is talking about restraint knowing when to hold back do i let my emotions show in this situation Or do I maintain my composure and say as little as possible so I can maintain my control over the situation? Right. And that's what it's about. It's about understanding that less is often more. And by saying less, you can make a greater impact. Now, a side note, there's a story I heard about um, Bruce Willis and I've actually seen it in a scene. I just can't remember what movie it was. I really can't remember what movie it was, but it was so powerful. It was a a group of people around a table, and it was like a party setting. And he was sitting there, just listening, 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 not saying much. And then he just says one word or a few words, and then stops. And just starts listening again. Now everybody's intrigued. Everybody around that table was looking at him like, who are you? Where do you, what do you do? Where do you come from? Like, what are you about? And they were just curious, naturally, because he said so little, they wanted to know more. And they've been doing all the talking all night. But his whole intention in that scene was 
to show how much power and control he had over all these people that he didn't really know. Right. So that's just a nice little side story for you to keep in mind. Let's think about it in a business setting. In a business environment, it could mean being mindful of how much information you share in a meeting or a presentation. Right. So there's often a lot of meetings that happen in businesses. And if you're the person that's constantly saying something or speaking, it really says a lot about who you are and what you know, which is a lot of nothing. But keeping your message concise, you can make a greater impact and be more effective in getting your point across. Because sometimes people don't need the jargon. I shouldn't say sometimes. Almost every single time, we don't need the jargon. Just cut straight to the chase. Let us know exactly what it is that you mean to say and say what you mean. Okay? So in a business setting, please... Don't just speak for the sake of having someone hear you or see you speak. Speak because you have something to contribute that is going to impact or move the conversation in a direction that everyone in that room wants it to go or needs it to go. All right. Not just random jargon that's going to set us back because now we've just wasted time. We didn't get anything done. We were not productive. Now, in a political setting, right, it could also mean being mindful of how much information you share with the media. Right. And and that's important because the less you give them, the more control you have. You also maintain that air of mystery. But when you give everything, you no longer have control of that narrative. So that's why politicians don't give us all the information you know, that we need because they need to control the narrative. They need to control the situation. And that's why they give you bits and pieces, a lot of sound bites, right? And that's about it. Lip service. Some people call it now, right? Now, those are just some examples that I'm trying to give you here relating to this law. Remember, saying less is is necessary, okay? So let's think about it in the real life scenarios. I'll give you some examples that, again, that will help you take away. I'm not diving deep into these um, laws, by the way, just so you know. I'm literally giving you the summary, the breakdown, the Coles notes, if you call it, so that you can actually take it and adopt it and apply it or at least assess your scenarios in your environment and see how they can be applied. Or how they are being applied. Maybe not by you, but others around you who are familiar with this law, right? So, there's so many ways to use um, these episodes. So, take advantage. Now, let's think about an example like uh, Warren Buffett. He's the chairman and CEO of uh, Berkshire Hathaway. Now, Warren has been known for being a man of very few words. Okay? But he has a strong ability in being concise. He's straight to the point. He knows what he wants to say and he says it and he means what he says. Now, that's key. He has stated that he believes that people who talk a lot often don't know what they're talking about. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so the key is in listening and then saying what you need to say to move the conversation forward in the right direction. Pardon me. Let's look into the entertainment industry. One of my old school favorites. He's still doing great work today. All right. Clint Eastwood. If you don't know who that is, look it up. The good, the bad and the ugly is a classic of mine. I can watch that any day. It's long as hell, but it's a beautiful story. Okay. Um, Now, he's an actor and a director. He's also known for being a man of very few words. That's why you don't see him in the media very often. If at all. Heck, most people don't even know if he's still alive. Right? And that's the the air of mystery that we're talking about here. He has stated that he believes that less is more. And by saying less, you make a greater impact. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? That's two different individuals, two different um, sectors saying the same exact thing and displaying the same demeanor. So, there's proof in the pudding, right? So, keep that in mind. 
Now, let's jump into sports. Don't worry, I'm not going to throw Michael Jordan in there, even though I wanted to, because it's so easy to use Michael Jordan once again, because he is the GOAT. That's debatable to you, not to me. <laughs> I'm going to use none other than uh, Kobe Bryant as, as my example for this one here. Obviously, we know who he is. Rest in peace. Um, and he was known for his ability to be concise for his ability to deliver a message in just a few words. When you ask Kobe Bryant after a post game, if he lost, and let's say he lost by one, you know what he would tell you? I'll see him next time. Or it's a long series. Or let's look forward to the next game. Or Whatever else comes to his mind. But the point here, if you have noticed, simple, straight to the point, one word answers. It leaves you intrigued as to think, what is he saying? What does he actually mean by those words? Wait, what's he going to do? Oh, my gosh. He builds the anticipation. Because now you're going into the next game, if it's a seven game series, thinking, I remember what Kobe said about the interview in that interview after that game that he lost. I'm curious which Kobe we're going to get today because he didn't sound like he was too pleased. And this thing applies even when he speaks to or about teammates. Right. But he's a man of very few words. But he means what he says and he says what he means. And he also stated that he believes less is more when it comes to communication. Again, that's the third person right that we're talking about here so it's very important to keep in mind the pattern here all these people have influenced us in one way shape or form and they were not talk show hosts they were not comedians they were not slapstick um you know talkers and people who just wanted to hear their own voices everywhere they went they were not the center of attention like that they'd rather stay under the radar but when they show up you know and you feel their presence and that's what these gentlemen have in common now i want to shift gears into the political world right more the social but political mahatma gandhi now some of you might be too young to know if you're listening to this and, you know, you're not of the 80s um, or even early 90s. Uh, I'm, I'm stretching it here, but, you know, Mahatma Gandhi is an Indian independence leader. He was known for his ability to be concise in his speeches and for his ability to deliver powerful messages in just a few words. Right. One of the ones that I remember um, him sharing was be the change you hope to see in the world. Be the change you hope to see in the world. That's only 10 words, if I count it correctly. But that still resonates today. Today, you hear that quote worldwide. He said very little, but so powerful. Okay. So he was also known for his ability to be the master of silence and for his ability to use silence as a powerful tool to communicate, which means he said very little. He listened a whole lot. He thought immensely and then he spoke. But when he spoke, it was very little. So keep that in mind. OK, so right there, I've just given you a multitude of examples as to how to use this law. Make sure you use it. Now, it's necessary to remember that this law doesn't mean that you should not completely close off and not share your thoughts or ideas. That's not what it's about. It's about understanding the importance of restraining and knowing when to hold back and knowing when to speak up. 
okay you don't just speak up because you need to hear your voice or you want other people to hear you you speak up because you have something to say it's about making people reveal more about themselves when you're quiet think about that the more you can restrain yourself from speaking and do more listening you allow people to reveal more about themselves now keep that in mind when people listen they're actually interpreting your words so the less you say the more careful they have to be in interpreting what you have said or what you're saying right you still create that air of mystery the curiosity you have them asking questions why or how your silence will make others very uncomfortable your silence makes others extremely uncomfortable and people want to know what you're thinking when you are carefully right when you carefully control what it is that you reveal because now it's like wait a minute what did he mean by that why did she say it the way she said that what was the implication behind that message or that statement you establish curiosity in their minds they want to know what you're thinking when you carefully control what it is that you reveal. You will have them thinking about you and what you said long after your interaction with them. Also keep in mind that once your words leave your mouth, those are something you can never take back. That's another reason why you want to make sure you do a lot more thinking and you say a lot less. Because you know once they leave, they can never take them back. Now, another thing that I want to share with a lot of people that we use often, uh, myself included, is sarcasm. Right Now, sarcasm is something that will find its way to come back and bite you when you least suspect it. So be careful how you use your biting words. right? And don't mistake them for just being witty or clever. Because sarcasm has a way of coming back. Right. If you think about what I just said about people interpreting your words. So you being sarcastic, you might think you're being funny. But you might be offending them deeply. And that's why it's going to come back and haunt you. Right. So don't mistake sarcasm for being witty or just being clever. But consider the damage that it could do if delivered in the wrong tone or to the wrong audience. Understand that. But by saying less. I want to wrap this up for you by saying less and listening a lot more. You have a greater impact. Right. And you can be more effective in giving, you know, a message that is impactful and also getting your point across. Now, I want to thank you again. And that's all for today's episode. I hope you gained some valuable insights about law number four and how you can apply it in both your personal and professional settings. Thanks for listening, and until next episode, love, peace, and nappiness.